Nibbling on sponge cake Watching the sun bake All of those tourists covered with oil Strumming my six string On my front porch swing Smell those shrimp they're beginning to boil Wasting away again in Margaritaville Searching for my last sugar of salt Some people claim that there's a woman to blame But I know that's nobody's fault I don't know the reason I stayed here all season With nothing to show but this brand new tattoo But it's a real beauty Mexican cutie How it got here, well I haven't a clue Wasting away again in Margaritaville Searching for my last shaker of salt Some people claim that there's a woman to blame Now I think, hell it could be my fault My flip flop stepped on a pop top, cut my heel, had to cruise on back home. But this booze in the blender, and soon it will render that frozen concoction that helps me hang on. Wasting away again in Margaritaville Searching for my last shaker of salt Some people claim that there's a woman to blame But I know it's my own damn fault Yes, some people claim that there's a woman to blame And I know it's my own damn fault Hey, how you doing? Justin here. Today we are checking out Margaritaville by Jimmy Buffett. What a fun tune this one is. Big thank you to Frank and Mark and the American Workshop Gang for introducing me to his music. I was a little bit reluctant at first, but I'm a fan now. So this is a super fun song to play, mostly D, A and G chords. There is one slightly fancy chord that you can add in in the chorus, but you don't have to. Strumming is pretty simple. It's just a super fun song. Let's get stuck in. So starting off with just the chords, the intro starts with a D chord for one bar, two, three, four, then to a G, two, three, four, A, two, three, four, D, two, three, four, and another bar of D there, four. It is worth noting that it's a five bar introduction. Music seems to usually work in four, eight, 12, 16 bar things. So having five bars there, slightly unusual, but it fits really well with the melody. So it's not really a deal if you know the tune, just be aware that there's five bars there at the beginning before the verse starts. So the verse progression is 16 bars long. It's six bars of D and then two bars of A. 
another six bars of A and then two bars of D. I think it's better to think of that than trying to think of like eight bars of A in the middle because it makes it a little bit more consistent. It puts the chord change in a kind of, in a sensible place and you'll have that kind of landmark of the, the beginning of the second half of the verse. It'll make a little bit more sense as we play through it. So starting on the D chord, just going straight into the verse. Two, three, four, D. Nippling on D chord, D. Watching the sun, D. And then another D. All of these D chords covered with A. Now the second half starts. A. Strumming my A string. A. On my front A swing. Then A. Smelling those A, they're beginning to D. D, two, three, four. So it kind of makes sense there, right? Because it's doing those six bars of A and then the uh, six bars of D and then two bars of A covers the first half of the verse. And then six bars of A and two bars of D covers the second half of the verse. The chorus has more chord changes. So that one's starting on a G. So three, four, G. Wasting an A again in Marga D Cordville. D, two, three, four, G. Searching for my A last shaker of D, two, three, four. D, two, three, four, G. Some people A that there's a D, A to G, two, three, four, A, two, three, four. Two, three, four, D, two, three, four, D, two, three, four. Okay, now the one chord that is a little different on the original recording, you can choose to add it in or choose not to, is the A chord. When there's a woman to blame, it's actually D, A with a uh, C sharp bass. So just you play an A chord with a mini bar with the first finger, reach over to, with the third finger to the fourth fret on the fifth string. Okay? Woman to blame. But you don't have to do it. If you're new to guitar and you're just learning your A, D, and G chords, then don't be worrying about the A with the C sharp bass. You can hear it quite clearly on the record, but it doesn't make any difference. It's still an A chord. All we're changing is the bass note. So it's not a big deal at all. You can add it in, choose to add it in, or not. Doesn't matter. On that one bar note as well that it's two beats on each. So it's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. But other times when I'm explaining any of the songs, I always just strumming once at the beginning of each bar. So you can clearly see that. We're going to talk about the strumming in just a sec. One more time through the chorus. There's a few more chords in there, a few more details. Two, three, four, G, two. Wasting an A again in the Marga D chordville. D, two, three, four, G. Searching for my A last shaker of D. Two, three, four, D, two, three, four, G. Some people A that there's a D. A with a C sharp bass to G. Now I A. Da, 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 da. Hell, it could be my D. Da, 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 da. So there are the sections. That's all you need to be able to play the song. Now you've got the bits. If you listen to the original recording, you should be able to put it together. The one thing that you might find a little bit odd is the instrumental section plays the first half of a verse. So six bars of D and then two bars of A. And then the last eight bars are the chorus. It puts those two things together to make up the instrumental section, which is, it sounds great. Again, a little bit unusual, a little bit quirky. Also note that the very ending of the song, we have a chorus, then we have the last eight of the chorus again. But on that last eight, we chop off the two Ds and it does a little thing. So it goes D, 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 G, L, D, D, A, D, 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 A, D. It's just the very ending. Most of you probably get that those things like pick it up just by listening to the original recording. Really important to do that. Before you even get into the strumming, it's a really good idea to play through the whole song now with just the chords and just strum on one. If you can't get the chord changes fast enough, you're definitely not ready to add in the strumming. Okay, so work on that a little bit. Make sure you can do all of those chord changes. Now on the original recording, it's beautifully recorded. There's two acoustic guitar parts playing almost the same thing in the left speaker and the right speaker, but not quite the same thing. It gives it a real kind of breadth to what's being played. 
Now, the strumming, generally speaking, I think it's even eighth notes, and you can add an accent on beats two and four, particularly if you're playing it on your own. That can really help drive it along a bit, okay? When you've got a whole band situation going on, there are other instruments that might be doing that. The back beat is beats two and four, so if I just play on the D chord, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So I'm just playing even eighth notes, one and two and three and four and one and two. Just adding that little accent there can really drive things along. Works, like I said, best if you're playing it on your own in a band. It doesn't matter quite so much. Um, let's apply that strumming pattern now to a verse and a chorus so you can see how it all fits in. Actually, we'll do intro, verse one, and chorus, but with this eighth note strumming, okay? One, two, three, four, D to G, A to D, two, three, and another bar of D. Here we go, verse D. Nippling on D chord, watching the sun bake. All of these Taurus covered with A. Strumming my six string on my front porch swing. Smell those shrimp, they're beginning to deep. Gee, wasting an A again in Margadecordville. Gee, searching for my A lost shaker of tea. Gee, some people A that there's a D, A to G. But I A, la, la, da, 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 that it's nobody's D. Now, some of you may have noticed already, I'm doing a few extra embellishments there, particularly on the D chord. Also works on the A chord. On the original recording, you can hear quite a lot of the use of the D sus4. You get a D sus4, you're regularly playing a D, and you add little finger down the third fret on the thinner string. normally just add it down for one or two strums. The other variation that works great on the D chord is lifting off the second finger, which gives you a D sus2. It doesn't really matter, it's just an ornament that you can add in and you know, don't go over the top and add too many in, because it kind of it's like adding too much spice to a meal. It just ends up getting with spoils the flavor. So it's worth practicing just playing a D and trying to add those different ornaments. especially on that where you've got the, the long D chord there in the verses. Um, another one I do use less frequently in this song is lifting off the first finger. That was too many, right? Just to, to say I'm demonstrating all of the different ornaments there. You don't want to go putting that many in. It just it spoils it. Uh, so when we get to the A chord, we've got little finger added down in the third fret of the second string, A sus4, and third finger lifting off for an A sus2. So you go. Again. Don't go crazy with that. You don't want to put too many in, but a little bit of ornamentation there when you've got the same chord for a long time really works. I love on the original recording the fact that they're not exactly doing it at the same time as well. It really kind of you know, fills it up and makes it sound really interesting. If you happen to be jamming it with your buddy, it can be really good fun to add in the extra lead lines played by the, is it called a kettle drum? The Caribbean kind of instrument where you drum inside the metal thing. It's got a kettle drum. Jeez, I should know that. Anyway, um, it can, it, there's a lot of that on the record and you can kind of copy some of those parts with the guitar. So let me just show you some of those quickly, just because it's a bit of fun. So the first one that happens in the intro, first finger's in the fifth fret of the thinner string, third finger's in the seventh fret of the second string. You move it down two frets and back, then back. And that last one, this is really a D chord. So 
you might want to actually play a D. The other time that you get a real prominent version of that is uh, in the end of the chorus. So, uh, some people claim that there's a woman to blame here, and I know that it's all my fault. Okay, so it starts here on the A chord. This is third finger in the eighth fret of the second string, second finger, seventh fret on the thinner string. Then that same shape that we had at the beginning, fifth and seventh fret, and then third and fifth. And then the same as the intro. Okay, so uh, woman to blame. And I know that it's all my fault. So you can kind of see you can. It's possible to blend the two together if you want to be a little bit clever clogs with it all. But it's usually you'd be playing it as a second guitar part. So you also get a little bit in the instrumental parts, uh, which would be. Uh, This time we're going down to the A. It's the same pattern. So we end up with a second fret and the open string. If you, I think on the original recording it changes the instrument there. I can't remember what it is, like a flute synth or something. If you want to try and copy that, probably it's a little G triad. I think that's the line. As I remember it, this is a bit sketchy in my memory, but this is a G, the middle part of this G. I think it's that fourth fret, second fret on the third string, back to fourth fret, fourth string, fourth fret, second fret on the third string, back to fourth fret on the fourth string, and then up. And I know that it's my own devil. Anyway, you get the idea. Those little parts can be really, really interesting. They can add another dimension to it. Like I said, it's kind of possible to, to play them at the same time, but it sounds better not to do it if you've got a jam buddy. Always great playing with other musicians. The more people that you play with, the better you get, the more you'll learn, and the, the more fun it is. Basically, music's made to play with other people, right? So uh, anyway, really hope you enjoyed this. I know there's going to be a lot of parrot heads out there watching this, so what other Jimmy Buffett songs do you want me to do? I promise I'll do a few more. Let me know the most popular popular ones in the comments below on this video on YouTube. Remember, if somebody's already said the song, it'll help if you hit, if you like their comment rather than typing the comment in yourself. Although, feel free to do that as well, whatever. Flicks your switch, really. Anyway, loads more songs over on the website. If you're struggling with any of the chords or the strumming or any of that sort of stuff, I'll see you for plenty more lessons very soon. You take care out there. Bye-bye.